Hey everyone, it is time for January favorites. Just a few housekeeping details. Any thumping you may hear is because my son and one of his friends are having a wicked indoor basketball game in his bedroom, which is slightly above us. So that's the thumping and screaming in the background. And um, yeah, as always, everything will be listed below. If I can find a place for you to purchase it online, I'll link that too. Um, let's get started. Totally random collection. I'm gonna start with the most random thing that I wanted to show you, which are socks, or in this case, a sock. And these are like little liner socks. And I recently discovered these. I don't know how new they are. They're probably not very new at all. I'm just kind of new to them. They're new to me. And what's you wear these in shoes that are like ballet slipper cut type shoes. Um, I think that's the intended purpose. It's so that they don't chafe your feet. They cover the places that tend to get red marks or chafing. What I love the most about them is they have this little built-in thing in the heel. Can you see that little sticker? Not a sticker, but it's almost like a blister pad. And it, it, it um, protects your heel so that you don't get blisters on the heel. So it's very nice. Love those. These are by Hue, and I also have them in black. I think they come in all kinds of colors. And I will link a place where you can find them. This is clean, don't worry. Okay, let's just stick with random and then get to the traditional. So I talked about a favorite book in the favorites of 2012 um, by this author, Still Life, by Louise Penny. And this month I've also read the third and fourth book in the series. Um, the most recent one was A Rule Against Murder. There's more in the series, so I'm going to order the next one, probably tonight. And if it's a, I just, I love, each book gets better than the one before it. And I love the character development, I love the exposure to Canadian French culture and the language, and the main characters constantly making references to art and poetry and literature. It's, it's definitely a thinking person's murder mystery. So love that. And I've loved reading them. I've rediscovered my good old Kindle, the original Kindle. Not, has no bells and whistles, it's nothing fancy. It's just your basic Kindle. I, this is the case, and here, here's Mark Twain. And um, I, I, when I'm in bed, I usually read my Kindle for iPad app so I can turn off my bedside light. But when I'm on the go, I'm getting sick of reading books on this tiny little screen. Plus, if I'm sitting outside, I can't read because of the glare. So this is fabulous. It's lightweight, fits in my bag, and there's always a book handy. So I love that. Those are the more random things. Um, starting with skincare, I uh, used up my beloved Dermaquest, um, whatever that thing is, the moisture booster, the hyaluronic acid, and I was looking for something new. There was nothing wrong with it, but there's so many options out there. So I did a little research and read reviews and talked to people, and I picked the Caudalie Vino Source. It is um, the SOS Thirst Quenching System. So I use this in place of the DermaQuest one. Um, I wash my face morning and night, put this on right after, and then follow with my regular moisturizer. Um, I really have noticed quite a difference in my skin. Um, it's There's even less flakiness, there's none that tight feeling after you wash, and I just feel like, feel like I'm glowing, I don't know. Um, I love it, I love it, and one tiny little pump covers my whole face and my neck, so I'm really enjoying this. I'll keep you posted. Um, what else do we have here? Nail polish, I have really been wearing for the most part, only two colors this month. I've really been enjoying them. I'm starting to move away from my dark and dreary winter colors. I'm not quite ready for bright pinks or anything yet, but this actually I've had on, I've gotten quite a few comments on. This is Zoya Julie, and she is from the Spring Collection. It is available, I'll put a link below. Um, it's just, it's, a, it's almost like a transition from gray to pink. Like it's a lavender shade, it has gray cool undertones, so it's not in your face pink and cheerful. I've really enjoyed it. It's almost a neutral color to me. It has a slight, slight, sorry. It has a slight, slight shimmer to it. And I have moms texting me to coordinate sleepovers. Sorry. And um, I'm really enjoying it. I, I'm, I actually, I put it on just to see. I didn't think I was gonna really like it. And I love it. Do you hear what's going on behind me? Let's just have a brief interlude. This goes on all day at my house. All day. All right, back to business. <laughs> so I 
really enjoyed that color. And the other one I really like is I am a sucker for an opaque nude or an opaque whitey color, like not sheer white, not not sheer white, not bright white, but off white to nude colors and they're off. Um, and this one is really fit the bill. This is Zoya Jacqueline, giving it a moment. So it's like a flesh color if you were an albino, but um, I really enjoyed it. It's not a stark white, I'll call this a winter white. And I really enjoyed wearing this. So those are my two favorite for January. Forgot what month we're in here. Um, some other little things. I have added the MAC Prep and Prime powder to my, or what is it called? Transparent finishing powder to my routine to set my under eye concealer. And I've really been impressed with how it has affected the length of time my concealer stays on, which is like 16 hours without any touching up. And um, it really has even impacted whether or not mascara sticks down here or eyeliner smudges down here. It's really amazing little, little thing to use. So thumbs up for that. I've rediscovered the, my love for the Beauty Blender. I haven't been using it for my foundation, but I've been using it to um, tap in concealer and brightener and all that around in here. So that's been fun. As far as other tools, I recently acquired the Sigma, I think this is the Mr. or Mrs. Bunny, I can't remember which gender of bunny it is, it's their travel set, and um, a few of the brushes in here are new to me, but the ones that I really, really like um, are the eye shading E55. I have this, I have some of these brushes in the old numbering system, and I think they've improved their brushes even since then, and I've really... Um, been impressed with the, like I said, this is the E55, the eye shading, but I what I like about it is how narrow it is, and I've been using it to smudge stuff underneath my eye, and even to blend out colors here. And the other one I've been using a lot is their tapered blending, the E40. Um, obviously I'm using them, they're filthy, and um, I've been doing that to blend out the crease, to lay down like a soft color, which I did today. And then the one that's new to me that I'm using a lot, that I'm kind of surprised how much I like it, is their large powder brush, the F30. And I didn't, I thought, it's another powder brush. I need, I don't really need one. But I like that it's small. I like that I can really kind of focus where I want the powder to go. And I've been using it a lot, actually. In fact, when I powder, this is the one I reach for. Um, two other brushes I want to mention are from my other favorite company, Real Techniques. I've had them, um, the blush brush for quite a while, but what I've started using this for this month is to put on bronzer. It, it's a larger head, it diffuses the um, powder, and so it just gives me a nice, healthy glow. It's not a focused, like a contour kind of shading. It's just um, a general all over face, and I really like this with my bronzer. I've been using the Benefit Hula Bronzer. And then the last thing is the setting brush, which is teeny tiny, but not that tiny. And I've been using that to pop the um, setting powder in here. So those are helpful and handy. Just, oh, there is one more, but I want to show you it with this. Originally, this was a makeup fail, and I found a new use for it. This is the Tarte Emphasize, and I have it in, um, I don't think it says, it's just brown. It's their Aqua Gel Eyeliner. Yeah, not a word, says nothing. It's brown. And when I initially got this, I hated it. It's impossible for me to work with in the traditional sense where you unroll it, you know, you roll it up and you draw across. It always would break. It was really difficult to work with. But what I've been using this is as a gel eyeliner. So I take it and I just have the tiniest amount showing and I draw it, I, I've been dabbling here. I draw it across my eyelid, very light hand. And I, then I take the small angle, the E65, and I just pull it and flick it up in the corner, and I get my winged eyeliner. Obviously, I get it a little more precise when I'm actually looking in a mirror and not doing it backwards in the viewfinder, but I've actually found a new life for this um, eyeliner. So I've been really enjoying that, coupled with the E65, or the E... I don't know what the other one is called. Never mind. Just We'll go with this one. So I've been pleasantly surprised, and I will show a demonstration of that once I finally perfect it. I'm still working on it. Now that we're on the subject of eyeliners, I've also been using, um, I all, like 99% of the time when I do my makeup, I use dark brown eyeliner. I never, I rarely use black. I think it's too harsh. Sometimes I'll use a charcoal gray instead of a black. But I've branched out a little, gone a little crazy, and I got two colors. Um, this was in this holiday set I picked up, and this is Tetra. This is purple. 
And this is More, the olive green. They're both by Stila. And here, I swatched them. There's the green and there's the purple. And I smudge them just in the outer corner here of my eye or along the top lash line. And they're subtle enough that it's not like, whoa, look at that bright purple on your face. It, it kind of works with the makeup. It's, it, it just adds to it. It doesn't take away from it. So I'm really enjoying those. And then another rediscovery this month was from this NYX Trio. And I've been using this one in the middle. It's, it's, I've been told an exact dupe for Matte Cranberry. I don't have Matte Cranberry, so I can't say for certain. But, I mean, if you swatch it, it's a very reddish bronzy color and I've been using a brush like the E40 or the like a 217 even and dipping it in here and then just kind of lightly going over my crease color or outer corner just in the top here and it just kind of warms up anything you're wearing and just gives it another dimension and kind of eases the transition it changes the look and it's real subtle but it's it has a really nice effect so I've really enjoyed doing that and I got that I did not come up with that idea on my own um, I came up with that after watching somebody else do it, and I will link her, it's Sharon Makeup Artist, I will link the video I followed to use to do that look, which is not the look I'm wearing right now, but it is a look that I enjoy very much, and I'll put that in the description box below. Um, also, and I think finally, nope, one more thing, um, I recently picked up MAC Blush in Well Dressed, and if you don't own this, you need to, it, if it works for your skin tone. I would say if you're a real olive skin tint, olive toned person this probably isn't gonna work it's very cool soft pink and it just brightens up your face and if you're new to blush this is a great color because it's so easy you can't go you can't really mess it up you can't put too much of that on that's really really packed on um, it's just a very nice light wash of color on the cheeks so very much enjoying that I even wear it layered over other blushes which I've never layered blushes before it's just fun we're going to pretend we don't hear the barking so I can finish this video. And then the last thing that I wanted, is this the last thing? This is it. The last thing I wanted to talk about is um, a lip gloss that was recommended by Emily Noel 83 in her favorites of the year. This is the Revlon Colorburst in Rose Pearl. And um, I picked it up and I'm wearing it now. And it's, I, I wouldn't say it's a total neutral. It does go with a lot of things. It, I think, again, it warms up the face, adds a little life to it. Um, I'm kind of getting away from the nudes. I don't know, maybe I'll come back to them one day, but I'm enjoying neutrals and warmer tones and just stuff with more color on my face. And um, this is a great one to have. And it goes with, it, it is a neutral because it goes with a lot of stuff. So even though I look at this and so, kind of think berry, it really, it's kind of a chameleon. So those are my January favorites. And um, if I'd love to hear what you've been using this month, um, or if you use any of these products and you have some advice to give me on how to use them. I always really do appreciate the tips that you give me because you all have some great ideas. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.